active in your neighborhood working on water or conservation projects. Great. Because that's the key to what we're going to be talking about now. And if you aren't, if you didn't raise your hand, how many people didn't raise their hand? <laughs> we want you to, to be active. Because this is the key, we think, to making and improving water quality in Florida and in your neighborhoods and communities. We think it has to start at the bottom and work its way up. First of all, I want to thank uh, two people that have been here from Sarasota County, Rob Wright and John Ryan. Would you stand up, please? Let's give them a round of applause. They're the ideal people that you want to have working with you in your governments, in your counties, in your cities, and in the state of Florida, because they are really excited about working with us, listening to us, and helping us, and informing us, and keeping us in contact with people like you in the room. If you don't have that, it really is tough. We're short, you're going to see in a minute how we're trying to change the way people in, who are employed by Sarasota County view what they're doing in our neighborhood. Uh, the first picture you'll see is just an average group of our people here from a couple of weeks ago working along our waterway. We have a demonstration project which is about 500 feet long. It's the Grove. It's a beautiful spot. Lisa was just there the other day and we appreciate her coming up and, and taking a look at it. Uh, we're really excited about it. We're doing a number of pilot tests. We have about 25 separate Pile areas, we have shaded areas, uh, partial shade, sunny areas, we have areas where we put in compost, uh, where we have spread it fairly deeply, where we have three to five inches, and where we get kind of spread on top. We have, we have uh, along the bank, where we established a wildflower uh, area, and then we have the sloping banks where we're putting in wildflowers and low growing grasses, which will grow no more than 12 inches to reduce the mow. Uh, I'll start off, we have three parts here, stewardship, research, and actual implementation. Stewardship is really the key piece. Uh, we had a workshop about a year ago where we had 600 neighbors and friends. We had a council person in the city of Venice. We had people from Sparta County and a lot of our neighbors came in. We had facilitators, Chris Costello was one of our facilitators. She has a poster session here uh, this afternoon. Uh, and we talked about what the community, what people would like to see happen along this uh, demonstration there. It was exciting. We really got quite a bit of, of input, and we developed uh, a, uh, a number of different options that we're pursuing. South Venice. Does anybody know where South Venice is? Hey, there we go. We've got some friends. Uh, South Venice is the largest neighborhood in Sarasota County. We have 8,000 houses. 8,000. We run from the Circus Bridge that goes to Venice, all the way down to Minnesota Beach. Uh, we have 150 miles of swale. We have over 20 ponds. We have three and a half miles of waterways. We have Alligator Creek. Um, and we have a, a large area which is going to take quite a bit of time to, to work on. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that we, that we are doing. Our goals are basically starting out is the inventory and complete biologic assessments for South Venice, our waterways, lakes, and swales. We have a biological assessment. This is very important. We want to know what things looked like before we started. This is a pre-measure. Pre We're doing on-site measures throughout the time. We're doing water quality measures every month in our waterways and creeks and so forth. This, will, this looks at the flora and fauna. We, we picked out some selected areas along our waterways. And this will be important to see over time what changes we're making. Uh, we're also looking at uh, rehabilitation. And what I just talked about earlier is we're working on Siesta Waterway. As a pilot, we have $613,000. Uh, the county provided $313,000. We received recently a, a swift mud uh, matching of $300,000. And our neighbors are really excited. We wanted to make sure that what we did worked. Uh, so we're doing these pilot tests. Uh, we're going to be restoring lakes and ponds uh, in our parks, and we're also working uh, with our neighborhoods on swales and yards, gathering prices. We're very interested in our trails and the bike paths. 
Um, what does this include? This includes Alligator Creek. How many people have Alligator Creeks where they live? They're everywhere in Florida, right? Okay. We have one too. Uh, we have lakes and ponds, we have drainage waterways, and the swales, which I mentioned. We have a large uh, group of uh, people we're cooperating with. Uh, I learned this lesson partially from Chris Costello. She's one of the great organizers and developers of cooperation I've seen in terms of the Scribalize ordinances throughout Florida. We learned from that, so we tried to bring in, as you can see, 10 or 15 different organizations, including Strong Harbor NEP uh, foundations, etc. Uh, now, focusing on the research, you can see these are little mushrooms growing. When we put down the, uh, the mulch, all of a sudden, mushrooms are coming out. And what we found, there's a recent USF study that shows that when you have mulch in drainage areas, that the nitrogen without mulch, 20% is removed with mulch, up to 80, 90%. So we're looking at this, the turning water quality coming out of our, our swales and into our waterways, we're looking at great, hopefully a great reduction in nitrogen. Uh, this is a photograph of South Venice in 1950. Um, You can see the, uh, the beach here. Uh, we have 1,500 feet on the Gulf of Mexico. How many people have taken their ferry over to our beach? Anybody? If you have it, you know, give me a call. Let's do it. Uh, it's a great fun. We just got a new ferry. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful beach. It's a, it's a mile and a half from uh, the Venice Beach and a mile and a half down to Minnesota, kind of in the middle. It's, uh, you can see that this was an undeveloped area. Alligator Creek kind of runs through the middle, up to 41. And then we have the airport at the very top. This is basically a history when I have time to run through this from 1850 up through 1977. Uh, the major, one of the major things that happened when they completed in 1965, the uh, intercoastal that divided our community from the the beach, so we had to, uh, we had to used to be able to walk over, and after 1965, we were using the ferry. Uh, one of the things we'd like to point out is the vast biological laboratories uh, in, the, in the 30s uh, did a lot of studies in our Lemon Bay area. We have a good baseline information, things that uh, many of you are familiar with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and their, their measures of numbers of acres of oysters. And, Grasses. We're, we're hoping to do the same thing for, for our area. Uh, there have been numerous water quality studies, and I must give credit to Steve Swab for this. He couldn't be here today, but he's done a lot of research and pulled all these together, and we're basing a lot of our work on the studies done by various parties, including Charlotte Harbor and others in this room. We want to thank you for that. This is an indication we have a monthly water quality studies done along our waterways. You can see all the spots that we're that we're undertaking these uh, monitorings. Uh, here's a Venice Gardens just north of us. And their, their affluent water coming out of their lakes flows through South Venice. And you can see how the nitrogen values are way above the EPA uh, proposed standards. And we're very concerned about that. In fact, we're working with them. Uh, and I'm making a this state presentation actually next Monday to them. We'll probably be doing some joint proposals for funding. Uh, restoration, this is what the county did to us. Uh, for instance, the Siesta Waterway, which we've been working on now for about two years, uh, was totally uh, covered over, mocked in. Uh, we pulled out microwave ovens, lights, dead dogs, you name it. Uh, we got down in our waders and pulled up by hand onto the banks the, uh, the sediment that had been gathering for 20 years or so. Uh, this, you can see the county. They're mowing down to the, the water's edge. Uh, we have stopped that, and what we're hoping is by planting these uh, wildflowers and so forth that we'll be able to uh, uh, reduce the mowing maybe to once a year or, or less. Uh, here's the swale maintenance. You can see that you see a lot of sand and, and so forth there, and then once we put in the mulch and uh, the grasses and so forth, uh, it completely rejuvenates them. Uh, now, just quickly, I'm going to run through what we're doing. Uh, we're basically, the process is this. 
We move the muck from the flow channel up to the bank and we mix it with mulch and compost. We remove the invasive plants, we regrade, stabilize the canal slopes. There's not much of that done. We're, really, we're not putting over, like most of the hydro seeding is done now is along roads and so forth where the soil has been disturbed. We are not disturbing the soil at this point. Uh, and then we're replanting with the site with appropriate vegetation. Hydro seeding will be decent. We'll be some, doing some individual plants and ferns. Uh, our project areas, we have three major project areas for the waterways. Uh, our pilot is on Siesta. If you come up to South Venice, uh, you turn left on Seminole just before Lowe's. You go down to the end of Seminole, and just on your right is what we call the Groves, a beautiful spot of 500 feet with about 75 palms and trees, uh, oaks, and uh, we're going to be making this a neighborhood, this a neighborhood gathering place, and this is where we're doing our pilot test. Our objectives is to enhance the waterway habitat through bank stabilization, planting of Florida-friendly native plants, and to standardize best management practices uh, for basically the county, which is a, the counties are then maintaining these waterways. Uh, this is what we do. We put on waders. Typically, I bring my waders up and hold them up. But uh, yeah. how many people have been in waders down in these uh, these canals? Has anybody done that? Great. Uh, Many of our people said it totally changed their perspective on what needs to be done. You get down there, you begin to realize what has to be done to restore. Uh, this is our high proceeding, which took place about four weeks ago. We have signs up. Surprise, surprise. The signs stay up. The neighbors love it. Here's our swale restoration. And the benefits. We're going to be restoring at least 7,500 linear feet of waterway, removing the muck to the bank, replanting with native vegetation, improving water quality, and uh, as it flows down into Lemon Bay, and then eventually Charlotte Harbor. Here's some, just some, some photos of what we've been had happened over the last six months in terms of uh, clearing, uh, all putting the mulch down, and uh, removing, for instance, uh, invasive cattails. And this is what the stream already is looking like. We're seeing wildlife returning hawks. There's a stork in the, in the stream the other day in the waterway. Uh, crabs, fish. Uh, there's a fellow who lives up along this waterway. He said in the 70s there were uh, uh, large fish. Uh, there were all kinds of otter, other kinds of, of uh, animals and so forth that were in the area. And we're hoping to eventually return it to that state. Uh, we have some these signs up for wildflowers. As I said, these are still remaining up. Uh, and finally, we feel the future is really up to us, to you, to me, and your neighbors. We have to build from the ground up, and we hope to become a demonstration for what you can do, what your county can do, what your city can do, what Florida can do, and what others can do around the country. And we're Really fortunate to have strong support from our county, from Swift Mud, from Charlotte Harbor, uh, and many others. And particularly, uh, we have over 100 people now on our, on our email list. So it's really, you have to build, I think, starting with the community, making sure your commissioners or your council people know uh, that you really are committed to doing, uh, improving your, your community. And as Lorraine just and I were talking before I started, she said, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican. You know, 90% of us, 95% of us really care about where we live. And we want it to be beautiful. We want it to be, you know, we want it to have good water quality. We want the air to be clean. And we're just tapping into that. We think virtually everybody wants these things to happen. And what we're trying to do is come up with ways to do it. Thank you, and I'll take questions. South Venice uh, has, has had a very active citizenry for years. And the county back in the, I believe the early 90s, 
were doing neighborhood kind of inventories about what they really wanted the community to become. Uh, we did that, well, what we're talking about today was high on the list. Uh, about three years ago, two and a half years ago, we found out the county had squirreled away $313, that they had spent. They had dedicated it to South Fence. They had hidden it. So we found out about it. Uh, we went to the county and said, we'd like to do something. They said, well, you need to talk to your people. So we sent out 8,000 postcards. They said, we're going to have a meeting. Show up and tell us what you want. So we got all that. We inventoried there were about 30 things that people had mentioned. And then we had another meeting about three or four weeks later, and we gave people little colored dots. And we put all the lists. They went up and put their dots on these various things. Water quality was number one by far. Almost twice as many as any other uh, selection. So we said, hey, you know, we'll focus on water quality. So then we went from there. Then we got John Ryan, Rob Wright, and we said, okay, what do we do? So we put on our waders. We said, we started researching. You know, what could be done? What kinds of? And Steve's law was extremely important. I can't remember this. He spent thousand, over a thousand hours on this. You know, writing up requirements, doing all the research and so forth. And many of you know Steve, and he lives in our community. And we came up with, a, I think, a fairly rigorous approach, where right now we've only spent on the actual restoration four thousand dollars. Under 4,000. We have 600,000 to spend. We wanted to make sure when we spent that extra 600 that we did it right. We're going to have some failures in some of those 25 different pilot test areas, so we'll know maybe we shouldn't do it that way. So that's kind of a short history of how we got where we are. In the meantime, people started volunteering. We're having work sessions. You know, we just kind of built. Thank you. 
was financially. We're going to defer the questions till the break if you don't okay. mind. Okay. So we're doing okay. a good job of getting back on track. She's like my wife. Shut up. She was. <laughs> <laughs>